Okay, welcome back. Our next session will focus on competition law, practical guidance for the prevention of anti-competitive conduct. We have two speakers from Tilika Gibbons who will provide updates on this important topic. Our first speaker is Konkit Tian Pichap, who is the director of Tilika Gibbons Corporate and Commercial Group. He has been leading the firm's corporate lawyers for over two decades. He is currently the partner leading the Antitrust and Trade Competition Practice Group. Our second speaker is Natavit Shrikan, which is associate in Tilike Gibbons Corporate and Commercial Group in Bangkok. He advises both Thai and international clients on a, a range of transaction matters, including M&A transactions, technology, and competition law. Konkit and Natavit, over to both of you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, for this session, we're going to be discussing on trade competition law of Thailand uh, with a focus on practical guidance to GC and legal managers of what's going on, the development of this law in Thailand, enforcement, and some tips and, and, and practical uh, guides on how you should do or what to adapt in terms of trade practice with your trade partners and, and, and what you treat competitors in the market to be in compliance with this law. Um, we have about 40 minutes. We, we have some slides to, to present to you. We try to be in control of the time. We will leave maybe a couple minutes at the end uh, for question and answer. If you have questions, please feel free to, to, to type in in the message box and, and our organizer will, will help the review and, and we will address at the end. Um, the list of topics that we're going to be discussing for, for this session that we take you on tour a little bit on the developments of, of trade competition laws in Thailand. Um, we give you some overview of, of enforcement and key statistics of, of the, the laws that was old laws and the new laws. And we give, uh, tell you a little bit about the competition authority we call Trade Competition Commission in Thailand the roles and powers and authorities, including um, Natawit will tell you a little bit about substantive provisions uh, of, of uh, trade competition law in Thailand. For example, abuse of market dominance, power cartels and or trade competition, uh, unfair trade practices. We will give you some, a few case studies, real case determination made by the regulators on, on uh, on certain market and certain business operators. And then we will spend some time focusing on, on the current developments, which areas, which sectors, which are under the radar of the regulators, what are the trends in this year and going the next few years up ahead that the regulator will be focusing on uh, determination and, and, and enforcement. And at the end, we will give you some practical uh, guidance and recommendation what you should adapt, especially the latest um, guidelines on, on credit terms, which was launched recently in the past couple of months. Let's start with the history a little bit. Um, that was the old version of trade competition law. Actually, I remember in 2017, when the new law was implemented on the exact date I was in international conference in Australia, sitting in the room together with, with uh, many trade competition lawyers from, from several Asian countries, from Australia, from Japan, from Singapore, from Indonesia. And everyone got about five minutes to give an overview about trade competition law of their own country. On well, my turn, I was embarrassed after hearing far, much far, uh, development of trade competition law in Malaysia, all the cases in Indonesia or Singapore, especially in, in developed countries like Australia and Japan. But for Thailand, um, before 2017, we had uh, Trade Competition Act of 1999. Believe it or not, Thailand was the first country in ASEAN to adopt trade competition laws. But after about 18, 19 years um, of, of practice and, and uh, history of development, um, the law was, was unenforced. 
there, there were some numbers of cases brought by, by uh, upset parties, I mean, complaints, but has, there has been zero enforcement or zero prosecution for anybody under the old law. So that's why the government decided it was time after 18 or 19 years of use to reform the laws. So the old law was repealed and replaced by the new version in 2017 um, with dramatic change, fundamental change, particularly on the regulator itself. It still, they still keep the old name Trade Competition Commission, uh, but they are more efficient because the size of body, for example, under the old law, there were about 15 members, mostly bu bureaucrats. They have their day job to, to do, and they have to spare time to attend uh, the hearings or meetings of, of TCC. And under the old mechanism, they don't have enough budget. They have only Department of Internal Trade to be their secretary. So with limited budget, with full-time job, the function of, of the TCC under the old law was not very well. They, some year they get to meet only one, one time or twice to make determination on some, some allegation or some complaints. So that's why after 18 years of use, um, it was quite a failure. Uh, with the new laws, they pretty much keep the same uh, regulatory regime, substantive provision on abuse of market dominance, uh, better merger control uh, app, uh, provision under the old law, there was no underlying uh, uh, regulation to, to open for application. But other 2017 version merger control filing has been open and, and is quite active actually. And there was a first time introduction of administrative penalties under the old law if you did uh, an offense under the old law, you, you will face criminal penalties, jail, imprisonment, and fines at fixed amount. And it applies to the, the, the offenders regardless of their site. So uh, giant companies breaking trade competition law of the old version could face small fines. So that's why the government adopt the concept of administrative penalties under the several uh, statutes, including trade competition law, and the rate could be 10% of the annual revenue. So if you're a big company, you might end up paying millions of administrative fines. And the Trade Competition Authority are compelled to conduct some public hearing. It's the first time of the legislative uh, announcement when they want to announce new guidelines or new regulation, they have to open for public hearing, allowing stakeholders to make comments and suggestions. And also the mechanism of the new laws allow uh, complaint to be filed to trade competition authority quite, quite easily. Let's look at some statistics, some numbers to show you by comparison under the old law, there were about 102 complaints filed to the TCC, zero, again, zero prosecution has been brought. I, I believe there was only one case that TTC made determination that it was guilty and brought to public prosecutor. After 10 years, public prosecutor determined that case was, was uh, there was not some substantive allegation or evidence to, to brought to the court. So completely failures um, after 18 years. After 2017, it's been only four years uh, I believe the TCC was set up in 2018 with Ministry of Regulation and notification, as you can see in the numbers, about 11 different notification was launched uh, on abuse of market dominance, on cartels, on unfair trade practices. That's why after late 2018, 2019, you start to see some complaints filed by TCC and TCC was quite fast and efficient making determination, as you can see in the number 17 de decisions were made in 2019, uh, 12 in 2020. This year, it seemed to be a peak. After uh, eight months, there were have been 18 decisions made on different markets and there were some 
um, uh, no guilty determination and also some guilty uh, and, and and the TCC imposed some fines. Uh, I seen numbers 6 million, 10 million baht on fines. Let's look at the role and, and, and responsibility of, of the regulators. There is a committee consisting of seven members, well-selected academics and, and, and independent members, which is formulated into TCC, Trade Competition Commission. They have authority to issue notification guidelines. They have the, the authority to determine uh, merger control uh, application that you submit, whether to approve or to reject. And also they have uh, power to issue the orders to cease and desist order or some administrative orders. Uh, if you know in late last year, November or December, there was a landmark merger case between CPO and, and Lotus and the TCC made quite a, a landmark determination to approve with seven trade uh, condition with some restriction that they cannot uh, change their suppliers uh, trade condition for two years, something like that. So, so not just limited power to, to make determination on complaints, but also to impose whatever the trade practice restriction that they deem appropriate. OTCC is the office which serve as secretary to the TCC. OTCC will do some investigation. They have power to do search, to do uh, to call for submission of evidence, to make allegation, and they also have the power to conduct some market study, which mostly they will outsource to private research companies to do uh, conduct on to, to conduct on price, market share on certain sectors that they determined as important that they have to look in and to 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 uh, determine which market players is being abusing their their market power we we want to tell you a little bit about the app scope or application of the trade competition laws um they pretty much keep the same context uh, concept under the old law, that's re which means they cut out some bureaucrat or central administration of government agencies, uh, state-owned enterprise, agricultural groups. Under the old law, they completely off uh, radars of the trade competition law. Under the new laws, they still off, but to the extent that if um, they are ordered by the laws or ordered by the uh, cabinet to do what they were they, they do, which means third parties cannot file complaint that they have violated the Trade Competition Act because they were ordered by the laws of cabinet to do. But if they, there are other trade practice or mergers that have been done without uh, order being being ordered by the laws or the trade com uh, or the cabinet, yet they still be subject to to the new trade competition laws. Um, there might be some overlap between sector specific laws like telecom laws, energy laws, insurance or financial institutions. They have their own laws and uh, regulatories on competition, um, which will be overlap with, with the main Trade Competition Act. Um, so the provision of Trade Competition Act will excuse them from, from, from the main laws and they have to comply with their own sector specific regulators and their own laws. Um, I will pass on to, to my colleagues not to, to give you some just very, very brief and very really quick overview of, of substantive provision of, of the trade competition law. Thank you, Krikovkit. So we are looking at the uh, control in terms of conduct. Uh, trade Competition Act control three uh, different uh, conducts which, is, which are abuse of market dominance, cartels, and unfair trade practices. Uh, let's get started with the first one, abuse of market dominance. Uh, similar, in, uh, similar to other countries, uh, is, it, uh, is it not your fault that you gain a market dominant or you are in a dominant position, but you are not 
allow or you know are not permit to abuse your dominant positions in order to be uh, in order to prejudice the advantages of art of business. But first of all, you have to determine your position whether or not you hold a market dominance. There are two key criteria, which is uh, the first one is you you are the one business operator uh, having a market share of fifty percent uh, and and uh, sale turnover in the period year of one billion baht. Or the second criteria is that is, uh, is is academically called three firm concentration ratio or CR three, which means you are the first top three listed in the market, and the combined market share of those three listed are seventy five percent, and with the exception of if you are uh, if you gain the market share of below ten percent or the sale turnover is below one billion baht you are not considered as a business operator having a market dominance. And I tell you earlier that it is no fault you have a market dominance, but you do not allow, uh, you are not allowed to build your market dominance. This means you have a duty to be aware of your trade practices, which, it, which might be prejudiced against the advantages of your trade partners or other competitors. Uh, under Section 50 of the TCA, they outline a number of uh, practices you, that you have to be aware of and which could be considered as an abuse uh, of market dominance. So I would go quickly. Uh, for example, uh, when you determine the price, uh, PDAT repricing is not permitted. When you grant discount or rebate, you have to consider whether or not the discount or rebate will result in uh, competition restriction or foreclosure of market entry. Let's go quickly to uh, collusion or cartels. Uh, collusion or cartel, which is uh, some of you who are tied may family with the word hua, uh, or gan ka tham rum gan or hua. There are two key different cartels. The first one is hardcore cartels. Hardcore cartel is strictly prohibited, not only in Thailand, but also I think around the world in uh, an OECD report also recognized the, 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 uh, the, the severe effects of hardcore cartel. So it is uh, under TCA is uh, imposed criminal penalties. Uh, the hardcore cartel consists of four uh, prohibited conducts, uh, which, is, which are price fixing, output restriction, bid rigging, and market allocation. And there are two key uh, ex uh, exemptions. Uh, first one, the statutory exemption when you are a single economic unit, means you are in the same corporate group having a relationship in terms of uh, policy and commerce. And under the guidelines of the Trade Competition Commission, if you gain a market share of below 10%, you are not considered uh, to be an abuse of your market. Uh, sorry, you are not considered to be a uh, commit a hardcore cartel for this purpose. Let's go to non-hardcore cartels. For hardcore cartels, mean you have an agreement of collusive behaviors between competitors competing in the same market. Meanwhile, for non-hardcore cartels, it means you have an agreement on collusive behaviors between a visit operators in a different market, which can be a in a vertical arrangement between you as a supplier and your trade partner as a distributor. Similar to the hardcore cartels, uh, non-hardcore cartels also prohibit the imposition of uh, price fixing, uh, output restriction, and market allocation, with the exception of bid rigging. Bid rigging is reserved for only hardcore cartels. In addition to the first one, uh, as you can see, number two, three, uh, three and four, uh, reducing the quality, advising uh, sole distributor, and um, imposing condition uh, or practice at agreed. There are also exemptions uh, for non hardcore cartel. The popular one uh, we will see in the case study is that uh, uh, the second bullet point an agreement between business operators which are at a different level in the vertical arrangement whereby one party grant a license, IP, or brand, and business support to the other party, and then the other party pay uh, loyalties or remuneration to the granting party. That is a popular uh, exemption for non-hardcore hotel, and we will discuss in case studies. 
Also, the exemption, same as the hardcore hotel. If you are, uh, if you are, have if you have a market uh, market share below ten percent, uh, don't worry about hardcore or non hardcore hotel. You will be, you will not be captured by the TCC. TCC. Uh, the final, the final one is unfair trade practices. These are, this is the most popular and most problematic uh, provisions uh, under the TCA because most of the decisions also uh, related are, are related to unfair trade practices. There are three key categories under Section Fifty Seven. Uh, you are not allowed to unfairly obstruct the operation of other business operators. You are not allowed to abuse your market power. Uh, please take note that this one is the market power, which is so totally different from uh, market dominance. It means even though you do not hold a dominant position, you have to be aware of the abuse of your superior market power, which can be caught under Section 57, and also you are not allowed to abuse your superior bargaining power as well against your uh, trade partners. And you are not allowed to unfairly set trade conditions which uh, restrict or obstruct the operation of other business operators. Under each category, you can see the guidelines uh, itemize a number of uh, prohibited practices. But as you can see, uh, the TCA does not adopt the uh, per se illegality as opposed to the US antitrust. We seem to adopt the rule of reason, which means, as you can see, we have we have seen a number of the word uh, unfair and unreasonable uh, contained in uh, in each provision, and the TCA or uh, TCC Trade Competition Commission issue the guideline explaining what does it mean by unfair or unreasonable, for example, is it an unwritten condition in the contract? Or you, you as a business operator, you does not tell the condition to trade partner prior, prior to the implementation of such practices. Uh, and is it you have no commercial justification or economic reason in order to implement such practices? All of these are considered as unfair or unreasonable. So let's see the penalties. Under the law, uh, TCA also imposed criminal penalties for abuse of market dominance and hardcore hotel. As you can see, the penalty is a imprisonment of up to two years and fine of up to ten percent of your annual sale turnover. And for non-hardcore hotel and unfair trade practices, uh, there is no criminal penalties, but administrative penalty, as Kun Gokit explained earlier, uh, this is the, 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 the new concept under this law, the introduction of administrative penalties. Uh, the, the administrative penalty for non-hardcore hotel and unfair trade practices is the fine of 10%. Uh, to the annual sale turnover in the previous year. Uh, the TCA also imposed the liabilities on the management, just in case the director, the manager, or any person who holds a, a management position and responsible for uh, overseeing the business operation of the company uh, become aware of the prohibited practices or they have a duty to refrain from uh, uh, committing in, uh, an offense, but they do not uh, take any action to prevent such uh, incidents. They are also, they can be liable under this law as well. This is the table summarizing the, the penalties. Uh, abuse market dominant, as you can see, there is a uh, criminal penalty, uh, all of them sub, uh, are subject to administrative order of as Gokit referred to as a ceased and desist order, meaning that the Trade Competition Commission may have an order to prevent the conduct or to stop or cease the conduct, which the TCC deemed as a potential 
violation of the law. And you, as a private party, may bring a case to the court uh, to take action for damages from other business operators who commit an offense. Next one, uh, let's get back to Gun uh, who uh, He will explain the current development, trend, and regulator priorities. Thank you, Natwit. Um, next, we are going to give you an outlook of, of what TCC has been doing in the past couple of years, which market, which sector, and industries that have been under the determination and radars of TCC and was up ahead in the next one or two years. Um, you heard about Natwit explanation on unfair trade practice under Section 57, which seem to provide broad coverage of variety of, of trade practices that's been uh, decided to be quite unfair and destroying uh, some trade, trade uh, operators. Um, it allows TCC to issue uh, industry specific or market specific guidelines. So far, TCC has launched one, two, three, four, five, five different uh, guidelines. And which means TCC has looked into this market, this, this uh, type of business. And it did mean that there are uh, two sides of, of the business operators, one being suffered by treatment or mistreat by the others. So for example, more than trade franchise arrangement, uh, TCC looked at it and determined that they have to issue predetermined uh, trade practices that's been declared that these are unfair and destroying uh, uh, the other side of, of the contract or the transaction. More than trade, they identify that some discount store or more than trade operators is doing some mistreat or, or unfair trade practice against some uh, manufacturers or suppliers. Franchise store uh, doing some things unfair to franchisee. Food industry, for example, that uh, farmers, food uh, or, or plant, plantation operators has been under mistreated by, by wholesale purchasers. Uh, the recent one launched in December last year on food delivery because of COVID and you, you all witness this uh, because of the restaurant has been closed, consumer have no choice but to order from, from the app. And there's been only four or five operators. And restaurant as well as complained and, and TCC determined to, to launch these guidelines that there's some unfair treatment uh, by the app operators, by the digital uh, platform operators against a lot of restaurants, for example, uh, there's an increase in GP uh, price or commission that that platform collects from from uh, from some restaurants. And the latest one, uh, which we will we will explain in in, uh, in further on credit terms on SME to to be shortened. Um, what TCC has been doing, uh, the major focus and priorities, of course, number one is the digital platform, whether it's e-commerce, marketplace, whether it's uh, food delivery, or even social medias. And recently, TCC has launched their market research studies, including the practice and the regulation of uh, some countries outside Thailand. And I read just last night, they, they reviewed some study by the Japan uh, Trade Competition Authority, Singapore, and China. And they have been focused on, on the trade practice of digital platform. We seem to have some, some, some abuse of their market powers, superior bar bargaining position to, to force the vendors and, and merchants trading that on their platform. Uh, for example, the top search which is very uh, user friendly to consumers, but they they abuse their market power and they um, they use vertical integration, which means the platform which is supposed to be the the marketplace has become a merchant and vendors for some 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 consumer products. They favor their algorithm in their top search platform that. Um, their, their own shop or their own merchant will come up on the top, top search. 
which seem to be unfair to, to other uh, merchant and vendors. Also, some limiting of choice because they controlled everything, they know consumer behaviors, they can limit access to certain uh, merchant and vendors, and they also control payment choices, delivery choices. Um, so TCC is right now is looking at it. We we don't know yet when it's come out that, but we suspect that there will be some some uh, market specific guidelines on digital platform. Also, you probably know about the increase of C freight in the past couple of years, up to maybe by now four hundred or five hundred percent surge. So, Minister Minister of Commerce has asked because of the, a lot of complaints from the exporter on, on shortage of supplies in terms of uh, shipping containers and, and uh, um, allocation of space on, on shipping carriers. So TCC together with trade competition all over the world are looking at the uh, trade practice and behavior of shipping carriers, including freight forwarders, whether they manipulate the price or they manipulate uh, allocation of containers to, to exporters. Um, right now, what we know is TCC has been studying some market and some, some specters. Uh, we read the annual report in 2019 and 2020, which TCC reviewed that they complete their study on certain market. There are some market that they decided to do self-study, such as private hospital uh, platforms, instant noodle or MSGs, uh, fertilizer operators. There are, and also there are some uh, market and industry that they start to conduct market study because of complaints. For example, modern trade or movie theater or insurance or restaurants. So that seems to be the trend. Let me give you a little bit of the latest um, development, which is the credit term. This is something you have to know. Um, it was launched in, in June and will become effective in December 16 and it applies to all sectors. It, it, it's required all business operators, whether SME and non-SME, when it comes to payment to SME, when you buy goods or services on SME, they issue your invoice, you have to pay them within 45 days. That's a credit term limited. It's the first time that, that Thai authorities has regulate this mark, uh, uh, business term or, or payment term, 45 days for all uh, trade manufacturing and services sectors, reduced to 30 days for agricultural SME. So, so um, basically this requires all, all business operators, especially large uh, business operators which deal with a lot of suppliers which are categorized as an E. And I looked at the definition of SME, it's quite broad. Any business operator with uh, not more than 200 employees or any business operator with, with annual return of not more than 500 million baht, which broad range, uh, I, uh, I read last night, the, the total number of SME in Thailand might be 3 million to 4 million. So you have to look at the trade terms and especially payment period of your own company. I, I know that many big companies, they, they set their payment date because they have so many suppliers uh, giving invoices and they have to make the uh, payment. So they decide not to do every day. They decide to do only once, once a month. And, and if you set, for example, payment date, let's say 25th of every month, you could exceed the 45 day limit when, when this uh, guidelines come into effect in December, because uh, if your SME give you an invoice on the first days of, for example, first day of, of September, and you pay them next month by 25th of October, you could exceed 20, 45 day period already. So under the guidelines, um, you cannot manipulate or go around it with, with you cannot ask SME to waive their right under this guideline, or you cannot manipulate their, your trade and term condition under contract to allow longer period of, of payment. Um, let, not to give you some, some case study, I'm mindful of the time we have about 10 minutes left, so we'll go very quickly before we, at the end, we give you some recommendation and practice guidance. 
Uh, today we have selected three case studies uh, which are all interesting. Uh, the first one is car authorized dealers. Uh, let me summarize the fact. Uh, the fact is that a car supplier uh, sent a letter to their uh, trade partners, I mean the, the authorized dealers, uh, prohibiting the sales of hybrid cars for taxi services. And the authorized dealers are not permitted to uh, sell outside the, uh, and do marketing activities outside the design trade area. And when it's the case come to the TCC, the TCC considered two different uh, provisions under the CCA. But first issue, uh, the prohibition on sales of hybrid cars, the TCC apply uh, a cartel, non-hardcore cartel provision under Section 55. It means that the car or uh, the car suppliers and auto dealer have an agreement not to sell a hybrid car for taxi services. But the TCC consider that, okay, both of them have, uh, especially the car supplier, have a commercial and economic justifications in terms of preserving a brand reputation, brand image, and quality of service as well. So they see that, okay, that's not, the, the, this prohibition is not considered as an unfair or unreasonable because the supplier has economic or commercial justification. And the CCC further points out that, okay, there is an agreement between the supplier and the authorized dealer. And you, and you may recall that there is an exemption under Section 56, uh, which applies to the uh, agreement between a business operator at different level. This exemption also applies to this case as well. So the TCC affirmed that, okay, this case uh, qualify for an exemption because it is an appointment of authorized dealer under section 56, subsection 3. Uh, then the TCC also considered the second issue, which is the prohibition on sales outside the designated area. However, the TCC applies section 57, unfair trade practices within unilateral conduct on the uh, car supplier, which prohibit the authorized dealer to sell outside the area. But the TCC considered that, okay, it's just a prohibition of active marketing or active sales, mean uh, the car authority is not permitted to do a marketing activity outside the area that the car supplier uh, designed. But they are still allowed to sell in case the customer contact authorized dealer directly, which is considered as a positive sale. It is a similar concept to the EU competition law. Uh, okay, you are not allowed to sell actively, but you still can do as a passive sale, which is okay. The TCC say, okay, uh, it's not uh, considered as a prohibition under section 57. Let's go to the second case, uh, interesting one, multi, bubble multi franchise. Uh, the case happened that the franchise saw uh, impose additional requirements after the execution of the agreement. Let's get back to the background. Uh, the franchisor enter into the uh, franchise, franchise agreement with the franchisee, and they also call for, uh, call the uh, franchisee to join the training. And, do, and in the agreement and during the training, the franchisor send the list of ingredients that the franchisee must comply with, must, must purchase from the franchisor, or must purchase from the suppliers at that franchise or uh, list or, or in the agreement or in the uh, instruction during the training. And after that, after the execution of the agreement, the franchise or imposed additional requirement whereby the franchisee must purchase a syrup and caramel uh, uh, under the brand from the supplier that the franchisee, a uh, franchise or require, but the franchisee failed to comply with the requirement imposed by the franchise store. The franchise store uh, went to the job of the franchisee commit, uh, conducting an evaluation and, assess and assessment. They found several failures of the franchisee. The first one is they failed to use the ingredient as required by the franchise store. They did not use, uh, they did not issue the receipt to the customer by using the program, a POS device provided by the franchisor. They did not decorate the chopped 
they did not ask their employees to wear a uniform as stipulated by the franchisee. And also, the franchisee increased the price without prior written notification to the franchisee, and they also sold uh, other products from other brands as well. So when the case comes to the TCC, the TCC considered carefully is that is it the nature of the franchisee uh, franchise arrangement that the franchisee had the, an authority to determine and fix some condition in order to preserve the image of the brand, quality of the products. And in this case, the test of the bubble milk tea cash flow and it's the justification as to why the franchisee imposed a requirement that the franchisee must use the ingredient syrup or caramel from uh, the suppliers of having the same formula as required by the franchisee. Let's see the last one. Uh, food delivery, increasing fees. It happened last year during the uh, second wave of COVID-19 in Thailand during uh, February to April. Uh, there are two uh, food delivery in question, but the TCC, con in this case, the TCC demonstrate that they conduct a market analysis uh, painstakingly by connecting the information from four different uh, food delivery uh, platforms in order to see the trade arrangement and agreement with the restaurants. And the TCC find that, okay, the increase, uh, the GP or gross, gross profit imposed on the restaurant is because of the different uh, factors depending on the basket size. Basket size means the value of order for each order that the, the customer uh, placed an order or the branches of the restaurants or the compensation that the restaurant can pay back to the food delivery platform operators. And that's the, that's, those are the key reasons of imposing different GPs, uh, gross profits on different restaurants. So the TCC hold that, okay, there is no unfair discrimination because the uh, food delivery platform consider various factors altogether and then uh, the TCC further ruled that there is, there is no cartel between the food delivery platform because there is a fact to the TCC that the GP rate uh, is ranged in the same way for among that, those four uh, food delivery platforms, which are zero to 50% of the GPs. But the TCC considered that, okay, this, the business model of them are quite similar and they adjust the price to the normal economic condition. There is no evidence proving cartel, so uh, they they do they did not violate the cartel provision as well. So, in summary, what we learn from these interesting cases is that um, when TCC made determination on on allegation of complaint, they try to be fair, even though the complaint filed against one operators. When TCC conduct uh, determination, they will conduct a little bit of market study, price, market share of all operators in that market to make determination. Number two, um, maybe some trade practice, some trade condition that you impose some rules and some condition on your trade partners might hurt them, might cause damage to them. But if you have good excuse uh, to uphold your reputation image of the brand, um, TCC would be fair to, to consider it and might determine that you're not violating the, the law because you try to, you have good excuse, you, you have good justification. And also the most important thing is whatever rules and trade condition that you apply, it will be non-discriminatory. It's not selecting on some group, on some particular trade partner. You apply to all. For example, in, in multi-franchise case, whatever very strict franchise regulation on, on cat register, on uniform, on the look of the shop, they apply to all. If anyone fail, they take now of the franchise. So, so it's been determined by, by TCC, that's, that's fair practice. We're coming close to the end. Um, the final slide is that we want to give you some recommendation to GC and to legal managers on um, of primary good practice, best practice priority. So number one, you have to examine all your practice, look at your agreements, 
your trade terms with your trade partners, um, um, especially trade condition to talk to your marketing team, sales personnel. Um, there might be overstyle trade campaigns uh, or, uh, or marketing gimmicks that is okay before the law, but it's no longer okay under the new law. For example, you cannot give discount or rewards to your trade partners or customer for refusing to trade with your competitors. It might be okay in the old time, but it's not okay anymore. And, and consult with external uh, counsel, lawyers, or attend some uh, training, some public seminar like this to be, uh, to be aware of the trends, whether TCC has launched uh, guidelines. It could be market-specific guidelines or a blanket guidelines like the credit term, which should, you should be aware of. And you, you yourself have to understand the mechanism of the law. Again, it's not really difficult. Um, it's abuse of market dominance. If you're not market dominance, perhaps it's a good idea to determine yourself uh, now whether you have market dominance. If, if you're not reaching the 1 billion threshold or you're not uh, alone holding 75% market share, then you don't have to worry about abuse or market uh, uh, um, dominant. So, so know yourself, know your market share, know which uh, regulatory regime under the trade competition law applies to you. Be cautious when exchanging sensitive information on price, on market share to competitors. You might not uh, do it by by intention. Sometimes you attend trade competition. Uh, sorry, trade uh, association where you sit in the same room with your trade competitors just to promote your industry, but somehow you leak out to them your price, your market share, or your product development, which is too sensitive to share. Uh, Natwit, maybe share some secondary uh, protocol. Yes, in addition to primary shield, which is your priority, you may consider implementing the secondary shield in order to prevent your company from committing a uh, anti-competitive conduct. The first one is you might need to set out internal compliant policies. Where, where did you get it from? Uh, you may adopt, if you are a, a global company, you may adopt a global policies and enforce them stringently uh, from all local subsidiaries in, in Thailand in, in this region. But I need to, you know, uh, you need to be aware of the differences of the law in each country. Uh, okay, it is it is correct that we uh, laws in this region might be modeled upon U.S. antitrust or EU competition law, EU competition law, but each country had their own uh, differences and values to implement the competition law. So, uh, in order to adopt a global policy, you you need to tailor uh, the policy to to be fully complied with the local law. And as we got it mentioned. You may arrange for in-house training regularly to familiarize the employees. This is somehow it seems to be a trend that uh, many companies right now engage our firm to arrange for an in-house training because uh, not only from Thailand, but if you if they commit the offense outside uh, outside the US or EU, they may be liable. They may be held liable in the US and EU as well. And it's another reason why they need to uh, give focus on in-house training. And in, that, in addition to that, the, your employee needs to be familiar, familiarized with the key provision of law and investigative procedure as well. Under Trade Competition Act, it also uh, introduced the dawn race. The dawn race is an investigation without uh, prior warning to your company. Some in other country, you may need to get a contact information from your lawyer just in case the competition authority enter your premises to conduct a dawn race. But uh, to our best of knowledge that this had not yet happened in Thailand, but you need to prepare yourself for the dawn race as well. And in addition to the dawn race, the thesis, uh, the office or, or, or TCC may obtain the evidence, may obtain the your products or engage your services in or, uh, for purpose of conduct, conducting a market survey. Uh, in addition to the in-house training, you may submit a request for prior decision 
from uh, to the TCC in order that the TCC will consider your market uh, marketing schemes, uh, your campaigns, and determine whether or not it had a potential violation of the law. But on the condition that you have not yet implemented such marketing campaign or strategies, uh, is is adopted in section 59 you can consult the tcc officially to request such decision uh, whether or not it potentially violates abuse market dominant hardcore hotels non-hardcore hotels or unfair trade practices but you are not allowed to submit a an official request for consultation or determination on merger transaction a section 59 does not recognize and finally you may file a complaint if your business had been damaged by anti-competitive conducts committed by uh, your competitors or your trade partners. Uh, there are various channels provided by the OTCC that you can file a complaint, uh, namely a uh, website, there is an official form that you can fill it out, or lie, lie application, instant, instant uh, messaging application or lie, L-I-N-E, lie, or the Facebook, uh, the OTC, OTCC had an official fan page on Facebook, and you can send a private message or direct message to OTCC. Or uh, even just uh, YouTube, the OTCC uploaded the many or various video clips on YouTube. You may comment, uh, or you may send a register post to the OTCC office at the government uh, complex. That's all for uh, practic pragmatic recommendation from, uh, for GC. Thank you, Natwit. Um, I'm, I'm aware that we are several minutes behind our, our uh, ending time. Um, I'm not sure whether we have time for Q&A. &A. Anyway, I um, thank you for everyone for attending this session. We hope um, you have found our presentation interesting and useful and something you can adopt um, for, for your practice to be compliant with trade competition law. If you have any question or require some assistance, private trainings or uh, assistance with, with application for merger control filings, please contact us. Um, again, I'm Pap Kit and we are uh, the lawyers of our trade competition practice group of Philippine Philippines. Thank you for listening. Sawadee